Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm Emily Oglesby, the Director of External Affairs and Partnership Engagement at the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. I really appreciate all of you joining us for our monthly employment data release call. Um, I am going to provide a few housekeeping directions to assist with the flow of the call. First, we're recording this presentation and we'll provide an update at the bottom of the statewide release that you can find in floridajobs.org as soon as it's released. Let me hop on this DEO economic release call and see what um, they've got to say. Okay. Second, everyone's phone line should be muted and remain muted. So please, everyone, look at your um, screen. Make sure your, your phone lines are muted. Your camera should also be turned off. You should see and hear our team on the screen at all times. We'll also do a screen share so that you have the ability to, to view and um, video our presentation as needed. Um, we will also be taking questions at the end of the presentation from credentialed media. In order to ask a question, you must submit your question in the Teams chat. So if you hover over your screen, you will see a chat icon. You can click that button to enable the conversation feature within our meeting. Um, that way you can type in your question and we'll do our best to answer all of the questions. We will not be able to accept questions through a private chat, so please use this option. Please also note that we will answer as many questions as we can. If your question isn't answered, you can also email our team at media at deo.myflorida.com and we'll work with you to get to get you an answer as soon as possible. I'll also provide this information in the chat feature so you have our contact. Today's presentation is focused on employment data for January 2021. Questions regarding reemployment assistance will not be addressed on this call and should be sent to media at deo.myflorida.com. Feel free to send questions as the presentation progresses and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Now I'm going to turn the call over to Adrian Johnson, our chief DEI's chief economist. All right, good morning. All right, good morning. All right, good morning. <laughs> Okay, so at 10 a.m. this morning, the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity released January 2021 labor statistics for the state of Florida and its sub-state areas, including all metropolitan areas, counties, and large cities. These data were produced by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics through a federal state cooperative agreement with the DEO Bureau of Workforce Statistics and Economic Research, and they were collected through a combination of employer and household surveys, administrative records, and statistical modeling techniques. This morning, I will walk you through the details of the data release, starting with the household survey. The current population survey is used to estimate Florida's unemployment rate, total labor force, and labor force participation rate under the local area unemployment statistics program. Since these statistics are based on a survey of households, they capture information about individuals, not jobs, and they are calculated by the place of residence, not place of work. Florida's seasonally adjusted unemployment rate in January 2021 was 4.8%. This represented 482,000 jobless individuals out of a labor force of 10,069,000. Florida's January 2020, 2021 unemployment rate was 0.3 percentage points lower than the revised December 2020 rate and up 1.5 percentage points from the January 2020 rate. Florida's December unemployment rate was lower than the national rate of 6.3%. Florida's labor force was 10,069,000 in January 2021, down 390,000 from the January 2020 level, a decline of 3.7%. In January 2021, Miami-Dade County had the highest unemployment rate at 8.1%, followed by Osceola County at 7%. Monroe County and St. Johns County had the state's lowest unemployment rate, 3.5% each, followed by Wakulla County, 3.7%. Every March, we release historical revisions for the local area unemployment statistics and current employment statistics programs. This year, there were larger than usual revisions to the unemployment rate. Due to the unprecedented economic changes that occurred this past year, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics updated the statistical models that produce labor force, employment, unemployment, and unemployment rate. 
The revisions to the unemployment rate can be attributed to these changes in the statistical model, as well as updated inputs that were not available at the time the original estimates were released. Previously, the peak unemployment rate was reported at 3.8% in April 2020. After the revision process, the peak rate is now 14.2% for May 2020. The year-end rate of 6.1% in December 2020 was revised down a full percentage point to 5.1%. For, for some context, the largest revision to the unemployment rate in any one month during last year's revision, revision cycle was three-tenths of a percent. Job creation data for Florida is derived from the Current Employment Statistics, or CES survey, conducted by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. The CES survey collects data from up to 20,000 Florida businesses and establishments each month to measure jobs by industry across the state. Since these statistics are based on a survey of employers, they measure counts of jobs, not individuals, and they capture characteristics of employers such as industry and place of work. Total non-agricultural employment fell to 8,491,200 jobs in January 2021. This was down 800 jobs or less than 0.1% from January 2020. This figure is down 571,800 jobs from a year ago, an over-the-year decline of 6.3%. Florida's private sector non-agricultural employment was 7,410,400 jobs in January 2021. This was up 1,700 jobs or less than 0.1% from January 2020. Total private employment was down 519,200 jobs from January 2020. This is an over-the-year decline of 6.5%. The revisions to total non-agricultural employment uh, were also substantial, like the unemployment statistics. In April, the low point for total private employment in 2020, uh, the job count was revised down by 89,800 jobs, or down 1.3%. The December 2020 count of total private jobs was revised down by 124,700 jobs, or minus 1.7%. As we've discussed before, there are differences in what is included in the employment estimates in these two data series. Local area unemployment statistics include self-employed agricultural workers, as well as unpaid workers who worked 15 hours or more in family operated enterprises and workers who are absent from work without pay during the reference week. While the CES employment does not include any of these categories of workers, these factors can contribute to different fluctuations on a monthly basis. Remember, it is better to look at longer term trends than just a few months. As of January 2021, the local area unemployment statistics employment level was at 94.8% of what it was in February 2020, and CES is at 93.6%. At These two series are on a similar recovery path. Typically, the CES employment is lower than the local area unemployment statistics employment by about 11%. In the months of April to July 2020, that gap got smaller, anywhere from 4 to 7 percent. Then in January 2020, it was back to 13 percent. For industry employment, six out of 10 major industry sectors in Florida gained jobs over the month. All major industries lost jobs over the year. Construction gained 3,500 jobs over the month, but still remains 9,900 jobs below last January's mark. The trade, transportation, and utilities industry gained the most jobs over the month with 4,400 jobs. The industries that lost the mo most jobs over the month were leisure and hospitality, government, and financial activities. The January 2021 seasonally adjusted local area data showed that 13 of the 24 metro areas in Florida had over the month job gains. The Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater metro area gained the most jobs with 4,200, and Naples and Mockley, Marco Island grew the fastest at a rate of 1.5%. Other metro areas with notable job growth were the Naples, Mockley, Marco Island, MSA, and Tallahassee. And that concludes my presentation this morning, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Hi everyone, um, we will get started with questions from any any credentialed media. Please include your full name and outlet as you type your questions in the chat. 
We have a really great question from Caroline Glenn. Can you go over why January numbers weren't released in February like it's done for other months? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, so as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, we do this process called benchmarking every year. We do it both for the current employment statistics and that local um, uh, unemployment uh, statistics data. Um, so when we do that, it takes some time and we, we have a lot of work behind the scenes to do. And so um, every state in the country does the same process and then we get back on our regular cycle starting in April. Um, so that that month of February kind of gives us the time to to do that, those revisions and then release the revised numbers um, and the January statistics and get back on that cycle. I'll also mention I didn't say this in the in the presentation, but that unemployment uh, data revision that we did um, actually goes back for the entire series. So back going back to the 70s. So it was a very significant revision. And like I said, it takes time to, to pull all of that together. So that's kind of why we take that break. Helene has a good question. Are the numbers for Immokalee and are the numbers for Immokalee and Marco Island based on seasonal employment? Um, yeah, so what I, I shared in the presentation, those are based on seasonal employment. Um, on our website, we have a variety of statistics that are non seasonally adjusted. Uh, and then we have um, some seasonal available for MSAs. It's very limited, so we can't get into a lot of the industry detail when we talk about seasonal adjustment. We can only talk about the, the area as a whole. Um, so that's what I shared in the presentation. If you're wanting more industry detail, you can look at the non-seasonally adjusted data. Bob Hazen asks, any explanation for why the Orlando MSA continues to lose jobs? Yes, so again, we do have some of that industry detail, particularly when you look at the non seasonally adjusted data. We're continuing to see um, some job losses in the leisure hospitality industry. Uh, we know in January there were some additional layoffs in the tourism industry uh, related to some of the theme parks, and so that seems to be continuing to drive uh, most of the, the job loss. We also saw some losses in professional and business services as well in January. So Will from Florida News Network asks, what sectors are growing the fastest and which are having a slower comeback? So certainly leisure and, and hospitality is having a slower comeback. We're, we're continuing to see some job gains there, but as I mentioned, we did have some additional layoffs in January that have impacted that. So uh, we'll see what it looks like for February in a couple of weeks. Uh, where we're seeing the fastest growth, we still see some jobs being added in construction. Um, in general, we've seen financial activities, although not particularly in the month of January, and that was driven largely by the uh, real estate rental and leasing industry. Um, so prior to January, that had been a, a job driver. Um, we do continue to see growth in, in pretty much most industries um, in, at some level, um, but there was a lot of seasonal activity that was picked up in January as well. So we got a little bit away from the, the trends we were seeing prior to that, but I expect that to, to go back to what we saw before um, when we released February numbers. So Dave from Florida Today asks, how much of the unemployment data is related to people leaving the workforce be because they are making more money from federal unemployment benefits? So we don't have a way to measure exactly why people may be leaving the workforce, so I can't specifically comment on that, but I will say that we have seen um, Compared to last year, of course, our labor force is much smaller. We did lose people uh, as a whole in the labor force, and uh, that was part of the revisions that were done for last year's data. Um, but we, towards the end of the year and continuing in January, we have seen people coming back into the labor force. So we're actually seeing a reversal of that trend. Mike Vasilinda from Capital News Service asks, given Given that the adjustment was a full point, how would you describe current or current employment trend? 
That's a great question. So I think what we saw towards the end of the year, uh, just like I just mentioned, towards the end of 2020 and, and picking up in January 2021, is jobs are continuing to be added back into our um, our economy, uh, and people are going back into work. So we are we are seeing people going uh, back into employment status. We're actually seeing a reduction in unemployed, so we, that job growth is uh, connecting people back into the labor market and people are getting jobs. Okay, we'll do a last call for questions. Okay, well, we will say that that is there are no more questions. If anyone has any additional questions, you can email us at media at deo.myflorida.com or you can call 850-245-7110. We really appreciate all of you joining the call today and we will see you actually in a couple of weeks. Our next call will be March the 26th, Friday, March 26th. Sorry, I was trying to pull that out of my head. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Um, we'll see you all next time. Bye.